Well, before we get into the video, I just wanna say happy Thanksgiving to you guys. I know that I am grateful for you guys. I also know that I am just grateful every day that I get to wake up in the morning with a pillow under my head, with three healthy boys and a smoking hot wife. So anyways, guys, today I wanna to talk about cold water cranking. And cold water cranking is a technique that works throughout the winter as long as your lakes do not freeze over. And it is a great way to catch some really big bass. Now in this video, I'm gonna talk about three tips, three cold water cranking tips that I think can really help you. I'm also gonna talk a little bit at the end of this video about how to do this in uh, from the bank and, and, and from even in a pond because I used to do this pond fishing back in the day. Now, before we get into it, this video is brought to you by my apparel company, Fin Fishing. And right now, I am running the Black Friday sales. Everything at Fin Fishing is 20% off except for my rod gloves. So USA made sun shirts, bass hats, wooden patches, my new, uh, my new shorts, my new duck shorts, sun gloves, everything is 20% off. So I'm gonna leave some links down below in the description. Shopping at Fin Fishing is truly the best way to help support this channel. I greatly appreciate each and every one of you who have done so. And also thank you to every single one of you who have ever just viewed a video. I also really appreciate you as well. All right, let's talk about cold water cranking. Now, something that I really love about cranking in cold water is that this, this is primarily a shallower water technique. I think that for a lot of fishing during the winter, we are fishing offshore. We are fishing, you know, with our electronics and we are doing the electronics deal, even the forward facing deal. And that is kind of the primary way of fishing. But when you are cold water cranking, this is something that, that you are just targeting a different fish. You are targeting a fish that relates to the bank primarily. And something that I found out years and years ago is that if you have deeper water fairly close by, those fish will be extremely shallow, shallower than you think, and even very cold water. I was fortunate to have a pond growing up in my backyard. And if we got ice on the pond, there were certain years where we would get ice on the pond without snow, and you get that black ice that you can see very like easily through. And our pond was really clear. And I remember so many times where I would be on the pond and I would be looking down in two, three foot of water and I would see bass. I would remember, and it wasn't all the time, but every now and then you'd have these sunny days where, where you could see really easily and you would see bass slowly moving in shallow water. And it's something that it taught me is that fish don't always necessarily just go deep in the winter. And I know that for a lot of you guys who fish up in the northern part of the country where you do a ton of ice fishing, where I don't know anything about ice fishing. I hate it, if I'm being honest. The few times I've done it, I just do not like it. But I do know that a lot of guys will target really shallow water fish even through the ice, like fishing in five foot of water on ice. And so fish will stay shallow throughout the entire year. Bass will stay shallow throughout the entire year, but they like to have deep water close by. That is a really big key, especially when it comes to fishing a crankbait. Now, when it comes to fishing the crankbait, a lot of you guys know this, but one of the most important things when it comes to fishing a shallow water cr or a crankbait throughout the winter is having the right crankbait. You really want a crankbait that has a very tight wiggle. And I also typically don't like crankbaits that have a tremendous amount of vibration and BBs in them. I want something that doesn't have a lot of sound and has a tight wiggle. I think one of the best cold water crankbaits that's ever been made is the Rapala Shad Wrap. And, and there's a lot of you guys who know this bait. The unfortunate thing about the, the Rapala Shad Wrap it is it is a it is a light bait. It is very light. It, it can be difficult to cast, but there's also other really good crankbaits. I know that for me over the last couple of years, the Berkeley Fritz side has taken up a lot of my cold water crankbait. Like I really like that crankbait and it casts very well. You can, you can cast that bait even in the wind with really not having any issues at all. But there's other really good ones out there. There's a lot of balsa baits that are custom that are really good. I can think of like the pH custom flat sides that are good. Um, even like uh, 
mass produced. Like I think Strike King makes, I think it's called the Lucky Shad. It's one that I used to use a lot back in the day. I don't use it quite as much anymore, but that was a really good bait. But the big thing that you want is a tight wiggling crankbait. That is truly, really, really key. And the biggest thing about that is that it's not moving a ton of water. And so therefore it's a little bit more enticing to a bass. Baits that move a tremendous amount of water in the winter don't always uh, entice bass because it just looks unnatural. It feels unnatural to a bass. A lot of things in cold water are cold blooded. They're slowing down they don't have as much vibration. So those tight wiggling crankbaits can be a big, big key to catching fish. Now the other big key is fishing these crankbaits on a light line. Although this is a shallower water technique, I still like to have a crankbait that can get as deep as I can get it. Because sometimes I might be fishing, you know, kind of like a creek channel swing type bank, or maybe even a rock type bank, whether that's a rip wrap type bank or a natural rock bank. And I want, I don't know exactly where those bass are going to be. Maybe they're up in two feet of water. Maybe sometimes they're down in six and seven and eight foot of water. It kind of depends a lot of times on the light penetration. Usually kind of where that light stops in the water column is that zone where a lot of bass are going to sit on. And this can depend on where you are on the body of water that you're fishing. It can also depend on what, what body of water you're fishing. I mean, some lakes are muddier, some lakes are cleaner. And so I still like to have a crankbait even though this is more of a shallow technique that will run the deepest it can, which means fishing it on light line. A lot of eight pound tests and 10 pound tests is what I'm gonna use when it comes to cranking during the winter and doing some cold water cranking. Now, if you are fishing baits like a shad wrap, another deal is that you're probably gonna wanna fish that bait on a spinning rod, um, especially the shad wrap specifically. I, I fish um, the Berkeley Fritz Side Junior a lot, and I can whip that thing around on a bait caster, no problem, especially when you dial down your line to eight or 10 pound test. Um, but that, that, that Rapala Shad Rap, I mean, it's a balsa bait. It's, it's, it can be very hard to catch, but it is, it is one of the best when it comes to cold water cranking. And so you might wanna consider going down to a spinning rod in that situation. Um, so anyways, light line, getting that bait down is deep because again, you don't know exactly where the fish are gonna be. All right, the next thing that I think, I think that this is the most important thing when it comes to fishing shallow water and, and cranking during the winter and in cold water is a stop and go retrieve. Uh, there's very little time where I fish a crankbait where I am bringing that bait at a constant speed anyways. I mean, during the summer, I will rip a crankbait a lot, you know, like a deep diving crankbait. But if I'm fishing any time of the year in shallow water, let alone in cold water, I do a stop and go retrieve a lot, or at least a retrieve where I am slowing that bait up and speeding it up. So a lot of times when I cast that bait out, I'm reeling it down. I'm gonna kind of sweep my rod to the side and kind of reel up the slack sweep the rod to the slide and reel the slack. And what that crankbait is doing is it's just kind of going down there and then it's slowing down and it's going a little bit faster. And sometimes if you completely kill it, it'll just kind of kick back a little bit, not super aggressively, it'll just kind of kick back. And that, at, there are days out there where that little stop where you kick it back, will entice, well, that will be the triggering mechanism to catch a lot of fish. So anytime I'm fishing, shallow water crankbaits, but especially during cold water, I am doing some sort of stop and go retrieve. Now, real quickly, I wanna talk to um, the bank angler a little bit about this because I used to fish a shad wrap in a pond a lot. And it was a little bit difficult, but you can do it. The best thing about fishing in cold water with crankbaits is that typically you don't have near as much vegetation growth. Um, and so the big key though here, <clears throat> the big key here though, is the way up because a lot of times like you can kind of position, like if you have a little bit of a corner of a pond, you can kind of position yourself where you're actually kind of making like a 45 degree cast to the bank, even though you're fishing from the bank, you're casting to the other bank at a 45. So you can kind of bring it down the slope of a bank, but when it gets closer to you, the big thing you gotta do is simply put your reel up in the air and really slow roll that crankbait because you gotta kind of get that bait to come up the, the hill or the bank to you. And I have found, and I've seen this even in warm water when I've cranked in 
off of ponds and warm water is that when that bait goes from kind of down there on the bottom, close to the bottom, and then it pivots upward and you slow it down, you will get a lot of bites right there, right where it goes from going down to slowing down and pivoting up. That is when you will get a lot of bites. Something about that action, and I've seen it a lot with forward-facing sonar, even though in a pond you're not using forward-facing sonar, but with other lures and forward-facing sonar, that upwards retrieve looks like a bait is getting away from a bass, and that can entice a lot of fish. But you wanna make sure that you don't hit against the, the actual bottom of the pond a lot of times if you're fishing a pond, because typically it's a silty bottom. It's a mucky bottom. It's not rock. Now, there are ponds out there that I fish that are like old quarries that are a, a lot more rock in them. And in that case, you can kind of cast the bait out. You fish it a lot more like you would on a lake, but you're kind of doing the reverse of a lake because on a lake, you're casting from deep water to shallow water. In a pond or from a, a rocky pond, you're casting to deep water and bringing it back up the slope. But in this situation, you can crank it and kind of keep doing that stop and go retrieve because it doesn't matter if the bait is hitting the bottom because it's hitting rock. It's not get, digging down into the muck. And so anyways, guys, those are the cold water cranking tips that I think will help you catch more bass from the bank or from a boat. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out that fin gear. Happy Thanksgiving, and I will see you guys tomorrow.